Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joy Singh. Sound the alarm, Joyce. The Golden Globe nominations are here. Hot off the presses. It was on CBS Mornings, plural. And then there it's was great. A, a YouTube live stream that started 13 minutes late and we watched people at the podium. Uh, I oh. tuned in at 8.15 because I was coming back from a uh, school drop off and I was like, I must have missed it. And I was like, oh, no, I didn't. I no, missed no, a single didn't. thing. I mean, like I knew it wouldn't start exactly at 8 a.m. on the dot because they never do anyway. But I felt like they didn't know they were live on camera when they were just like, yeah, no, around the podium and like wor working on the teleprompter and everything. So a, a great, the, I love, I love a morning show awards uh, announcement. That something the pan, the pandemic is re re recapping in every aspect of life except for this tradition of five a.m. eight a.m. awards announcements. The like the only award show that does not do it at this time is the Emmy. So I don't know why people get so hung up on this, especially for us East Coasters, because 8 a.m. is not that early. It's not early, but it is stupid <laughs> to do it this early still. I don't know. I'm just it's like, just like the Emmys have it, it down. Yeah, like the Emmys are the only ones. I mean, SAG, they do it at like 10 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. So like that's still slightly better. But yeah. like the Oscars are still like this. Uh, Great list of nominees, Joyce. That was my top line thing. A lot of a lot of surprises, would you say? What, what was your big take? We'll go through the categories and stuff and who was nominated, but just the overall thoughts. Um, a lot of fun. And you know, we we had trouble filling out a lot of these categories, especially with the additional slot. And, you know, I don't like the additional slot. And it's just like you know there's no need for it. And then it's it it really just takes the edge off of everything. It makes everything low stakes. <laughs> But like the, the way they fill them out were was exciting in some cases, um, especially in TV, because our fave succession benefited the most. <laughs> really just crushed in TV. I think we're going to do we'll do film first and then TV. So if you want to hear us talk about succession again after two years of talking about it, uh, just fast forward ahead, I guess. <laughs> but it did great. Love love to see it. Uh, eldest uh, eldest son, uh, uh, Connor. Eldest son, A-Scars, JSC. <laughs> It's great. Triple lead actors, just like the Emmys. Yes. When I was like, they're like, that's such a non Globes thing to do, but they did it anyway. It's so. the new Globes, Joyce. It's the new Golden Globes. It's not really like that new. It's it's more that um the the dearth of options. <laughs> yes. Uh and like you're saying, I think in the what would you say? In the uh in the extra slot that they had that they added. It was nice to see like who they added, right? I think, especially yes. in film, certainly, and uh, in TV. Yeah, like Alma right. Poisty uh, for Fallen Leaves in comedy musical actress. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's like n some nice surprises. So. I was way excited about my uh, Saltburn pals, Rosamund Pike and, and Barry Keoghan getting in. Barry, I had in oh, anyway. I mean, Rosamund makes sense because, you know, Golden Globe winner, I care a lot. Yeah. So. It, it was yeah. nice to see. Uh, Barbie had the most nominations with nine, including mm -hmm. a nomination, Joyce, for our favorite new category, uh, Cinematic Box Office Achievement, I believe it's called. What is it called exactly? Yeah. and and But like you're going to stump for your fave Taylor Swift, right? Obviously, Taylor should win that one. And I think she will based on like, how- this is, uh, this is an easy way to make her a Golden Globe winner. Correct. Because she's so I feel like been able to win song. So. Not corrupt, but I do think she's going to win. Wink uh oppenheimer with eight nominations flower moon and poor things with seven past lives a huge boost uh, i would say mm -hmm. here with five including they love past lives best director for celine song over some very expected contenders like alexander payne who was left out and best screenplay and greta lee best actress in a drama which we mostly predicted anatomy of fall with four maestro with four may december with four the holdovers with three joining other movies with three that included spider-verse which they called Across the Universe, which sounds like a great mashup, I would say. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, which you know I was psyched to see because that's a real Yeah, really and which uh, Wilmer called the Super Mario Bros movie. I mean, that's it is about bros, though. That The yeah. message of the movie is bro. bros. Yeah. And, uh, and the Zone of Interest with three. Another huge boost for the Zone of Interest after the LA critics uh, christened it Best Picture on Sunday. Um, so the five films that hit... Uh, directing and screenplay are Oppie, Barbie, Poor Things, Killers, and Past Lives. Pretty great. Uh -huh. uh, so I guess let's start there. Drama, best motion picture drama, Anatomy Fall, Kills the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, and The Zone of Interest. Um, I had all six of them. 
I think I had five of the six as I threw uh, the movie Origin in there as a Hail Mary. Didn't make it in, Joyce. Yeah, how do you feel? Uh, that that tank. I feel you. fine about it not making it in, but I, 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 zone of interest. But those are the, I think those are the six, the top six in the odds. So it was not uh, unexpected that they would make it in. You got to make it a little different, though, Joyce. You can't, we can't both agree on everything. Got to. No, I, I wasn't saying, but you're, no, no, you're I know. the one who picked it. So I'm asking uh, it. You could ask me later how I feel about picking Zac Efron and he didn't make it in. So what? Uh, let me ask you this: If you had it, what what was the five of these? Um, I would just drop zone of interest because that's really basically what I had. I had the other five, and then okay. when they added the sixth one, I just added zone of interest. Okay. Uh, not much to say here. These are great movies. I think anything if any of these if these are five, if these six movies are Oscar nominees, I will not be surprised at all. And in fact, I have all six now represented on my best picture predictions um yeah like i i think for the most part like both motion picture categories like you probably got like 11 maybe even 12 correctly i i got 10 um well i think we all know what you missed in the other category so i think a lot of people missed that one so yeah. for best motion picture uh comedy musical we could do next those nominees were air which once they said air, I was like, oh shit. I was so excited. The the two nominations I was most excited about <laughs> were air and Barry in comedy series. <laughs> once they said air, I was like, oh shit, something missed. Cause we that was not in the top six. American fiction, which I had thought had not a great showing, but at least showed here. Uh Barbie, the holdovers, also not a great showing, but showed here. May December and poor things. Not mentioned the color purple, the only musical of this group. Well, also Wonka, but Wonka wasn't expected. Right. Um, uh, yeah, real bad because Color Purple is such a globesy pick. Like they love their late breaking holiday musicals. And it couldn't even make it into the main category. Which is made beat. A really tough beat, I feel. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's because it was too late or they just didn't? No, like, it's not too late at all. No, like, let's be real. Like, they saw this. The Golden Globes saw this. This is not some, like, tearsy, like, critics group mm -hmm. that may not have been able to see it. They saw this movie. They they gave it two acting nominations. They saw it. <laughs> Fantasia and Danielle Brooks getting in. The Color Purple not getting in. I, I mean, we saw it and we've talked about it. We've both been, it was at the bottom tier of my picks. Now it's out. Yeah. I dropped it for Zone of Interest. Uh, I think it could still get in based on the actor support, but I'll be if it if it doesn't perform well. So this week we'll have the Critics Choice Awards, and then we'll have SAG. Again later. Well, it'll get in a Critics Choice because they'll have like what eleven slots total, and a bunch of ties. Yeah, it'll make it. They'll make it make sense. So if it gets in a Critics Choice, then everybody'll be like, it's back. Now it's maybe got a little bit of an underdog narrative. If SAG responds to it really well, I think it could easily get in because obviously the actors would be able to support it getting in, I think, for at least the best picture. And maybe it just gets those three or even four nominations overall, right? Maybe like, I mean, I don't I don't have Fantasia in, but I wouldn't be surprised if she got in. I think Daniel Brooks is pretty set. But it's also possible that Daniel Brooks is like, if not a lone nominee, one of the only nominees from the movie. Um, I It could probably still like swing a craft or two. Like I said this in our column on Friday, like it it could be like another The Help yeah. that just hit Best Picture and it got three acting nominations, like completely carried by the actors. And that also won SAG Ensemble. I don't know if Color Purple will win SAG Ensemble, but yeah, like it could still be carried by the actors into one of the final Best Picture slots at the Oscars. I think Danielle is in, uh, in, in terms of acting and then you could, you know, go for... Fantasia or Taraji P. Henson, who took a hit today too because she didn't get in, you know? I, yeah. Um, and that could maybe like costumes or something below the maybe line. Song. Song. I, I, maybe, so. but I, the song is getting pretty competitive, I would say. And I'm not sure if that song is going to get in either. Uh, the Halle, ba Halle Bally one would be, I think, the one that get the most juice from the movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I took it out as com this. It wouldn't, if it was just this. I would say, like we said, like, I think you got to wait for SAG. I'm not ready to, like, say it can't get in. But I was like, the way Zone of Interest at L.A. and then here, the way it performed, plus this, at least for me, because I didn't have Zone of Interest in, felt like that would have a leg up on the color purple. Like, the other nine spots I have are, like, all basically chalk and then Anatomy of Fallen Past Lives, which I feel like are both performing incredibly well throughout this precursor run. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't, like... It this is it's probably like on life support right now, but 
like I don't think you need to write the obit for it yet because this is still not the industry like it also hasn't been doing too well with critics prizes either I think Danielle has only showed up in like one or two places like regionals you know so but like it could just again it could just play really well to the actors and that coupled with the fact that like it hasn't even come out yet and we're it hasn't come out yet and they like there's no reviews because they haven't set the review embargo yet no so um but yeah also last weekend missed um nbr and afi too those Those are are tough beats that was a tough beat and then this uh, also a tough beat so really it needs a sag i think it'll do really well i I, it definitely has i feel like it has a not that it's unlike like you're saying i i I don't think it's like you can't call it's not out because it hasn't even come out yet but i'm like yeah and i think like it'll do well at the box office yes i think it'll do well when it comes out i think sag and the critics choice awards could have it on an upswing and then all of a sudden it's back in there but Right now, the data points are telling me that it won't get in based on how it's I missed think everywhere. It, they're just telling me that, like, I always had it in my low tier best picture anyway. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, like, at one point I had it getting, like, four acting nominations way back in the spring. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I'm down to one. Yeah. So, yeah. but, and then, like, a couple of crafts here and there. And I I kind of feel like, you know, maybe maybe it's performing worse than I expected, like, a little bit. But it's still kind of just, like, in that low tier section too you know right. i i never expected it to do well obviously with like the critics groups which are going to go for right like, like it's and, not it's not like a highbrow critics pick at all but i am surprised i was and even with the other like mbr and, and afi i was a little surprised but like not totally surprised and i'm like well it is still kind of like rolling out but this one i was like no, i mean like they rattled. both like went with mary poppins returns like that's like the mm-hmm. same type of thing this one this <laughs> This rattled me because I was like, I really cannot believe it missed in in this category. Yeah, like this is this is made for the globes, and especially with these movies. Now, no offense to these movies, are great. These are some of my favorite movies the whole year. Yeah, I I I love this lineup. Great lineup. Every one of these is a great movie. Mm -hmm. So by that aspect of it, I think these this is a deserving lineup of nominees. It's just like we're saying, the color purple as a musical comedy, musical full on musical should have gotten in here probably with the extra slot included. You know what I mean? Like it had six chances. Well, uh, this just means that if it were still at five, it would not have gotten in, no. which is even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's a little disconcerting uh, for the movie. Um, we could go through other categories here. So animated, we could just quickly do. I'm just going through their list. This is fine. Boy in the Heron, Elemental, Spider-Verse, Super Mario, Suzum, and Wish. Um. Yeah, Wish, your, your fave, made it. I should have kept it in. Uh, I had, uh, I think I had Trolls World Tour and uh, uh, Turtles, Ninja Turtles. I had Ninja Turtles too. This is a really great year for animated movies. I think people have been saying that all weekend. And uh, Boy in the Heron was the top hit of the box office. This feels like, mm-hmm. I would not, if this was like five of these got in at the Oscar, if, if the Oscars lineup was Boy in the Heron, Elemental, Spider-Verse, so Zoom and Wish, I wouldn't be surprised. I still don't think Mario is going to get in, but it could. Um, do you think Spidey can win again? Because it won, this is like kind of where its Oscar one run last time really started because people believed it could it could win the Oscar because like the first one came out in December too. And and then the, obviously Globes was the first big win for it. I think Boy and the Heron is going to win now I, because the fact is they could do Spidey. It, it's a two-part movie. And this is really still the first part. And it, it very obviously is the first part. And I could just see the boy in the heron winning. And then Spider-Verse, when it comes out around in two years, winning then to like cap it off. I think this, it's funny. Like, I think Spider-Verse could definitely get more than this. Not like, I think it'll get like visual effects now at the Oscars. It could maybe get in the best picture race. I know they're still pushing that too, but I don't know. I think boy in the heron is going to be like the one that goes far. It. Because like the past, mm-hmm. um, the last, the last year was Pinocchio, so that was like easy. And then before that, it was Encanto, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Soul won. Before that, so like it's been like the obvious ones the past couple years, and then before that was Missing Link, which was not the obvious one, right? I mean, so sometimes they they do their own thing. But they did like they like they didn't like Spidey. They love Spidey, and obviously people really loved the movie, and it made a ton of money. But I think, I just think Boy and the Heron could win. 
based on like the reviews, based on the box office, based on the fact that it's really good. And then Spider-Verse again, like it's half, I, I like, the half a movie, but it is half a movie. And I wonder if that'll be like- in Some TV people play. love that half a movie. Yeah, and may maybe they'll vote for it. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, those are definitely the top two. I don't think anything else can win. Uh, the cinematic box off achievement category, Joyce, no sound of freedom uh, in there. Sorry to- uh, Did they submit? Jim Caviezel, I don't know. Uh, but the category, the nominees were Barbie, Guardians 3, John Wick, Mission Impossible, Oppenheimer, Spider-Verse, Mario, and Taylor Swift. I mean, like I said, they could just give it to Taylor. Get Definitely going to give it to Taylor. Seems like okay. very likely. Uh, Non-English language motion picture, Anatomy of Fall, Fallen Leaves, which did really well because it got an acting nomination too. Io Capitano, Past Lives, Society of the Snow, and The Zone of Interest. Um, Yeah, this is a good lineup. Um, I, I think like Anatomy could still win this. I feel like it will also, but I mean, you could say past lives could win. It's just strange. Non-English language is weird. strange. It's just funny to me because I'm like, both Anatomy of Fall and past lives are very, like, at least 50% English, if not more. So it is like, I mean, fine. this is like, you know, what they do. Like, I know. Happen to I, I mean, know. at least now, like, these films in non-English and anim animated can be nominated in the main categories right. too, which they were not able to previously. Let me ask you this. So we Anatomy of Fall continues to just win and just dominate international awards, not English language awards. It's doing really well. It can't win at the... So what do you think will win at the... Inter, what will be international feature of the Oscars? Would it be like just Zone of Interest, which assuming... Yeah, we'll assume like it could, could Zone can get a bunch of nominations. It could get picture, it could get director, it mm -hmm. could get screenplay, it could get cinematography, it could get score. Yeah. And they so. could just have that win, basically, and have it win here. Yeah, I mean, Anatomy had its first loss in non-english yesterday i think it lost to boston yeah credits. so finally an l uh drama actress joyce i got five of the six because i took out kaylee spaney who i love in priscilla and went with anjana ellis taylor for origin which they did not go for but the nominees were annette benning lily gladstone sandra Haller, greta lee carrie mulligan and kaylee spaney that was the top six in the odds i believe um yeah and i had all six so congrats uh, I still think Lily Gladstone will win this. Um, yeah, it's I. I feel like I. It's probably I would say it's between her and I think Sandra is probably the only person, other person who can who can beat her. Yeah, based on the lineup and based on how the nomination shook out, I think that's right. Uh, great yeah. seeing Kaylee Spaney up here. I was so excited. I mean, I knew they would not be able to resist the person who plays Priscilla Presley. I know and Riley Keough. Love that. That was great. I loved Sam Claflin's nomination, which I guess we'll get to too. Drama actor, Joyce. I went uh, six for straight up, just straight down the middle, six for six. Bradley Cooper, Leo, Coleman Domingo, Barry Keoghan, Killian Murphy, and Andrew Scott. Yeah, I had my guy Zach Efron here. Yeah. So not a good day for the Iron Claw. No, completely yeah. back. I to saw some predictions over the weekend um, of Iron Claw in a drama picture too. I was like, I don't think so, but like Zach could get in. Uh, and he did. Great weekend for Andrew Scott and all the strangers because he placed in runner up at the uh, LA Film Critic, one of the 50 runner ups they had, I think, in the LA at the LA Film Critics Association. And it won Best Screenplay, which is maybe a harbinger of it doing well at the Oscars, but I still don't believe it. Yeah, I think it would mean more if he had actually won the award, but it's mm -hmm. like, like, who cares about a runner up? Yeah. So uh, it's still, it's still a critics group, it's not the industry. But nice to see him here. Uh, musical musical or comedy actress, Fantasia, Jennifer Lawrence, Natalie Portman, Alma Poisty for Fallen Leaves was the surprise inclusion here uh, for most. Margot Robbie and Emma Stone. I got five of the six. Like we said, I think I had, I don't even know who I had. Uh, I made a change last night. I put in um, Abby Ryder Fortson instead nice. of JL. So I mean, I meant nothing because it was a wash. I would have yeah. gotten it wrong anyway. So I had Evie Hewson for Flora and Son. Yeah, I, I would love to know if anyone had Alma. Was she even an option? <laughs> I have no idea. I actually don't know. Uh, but no, that was great to see. Uh, yeah. That movie's done pretty well, I think, with critics at least. Um, so. um, yeah, I mean, the others were totally expected. Um, and so do you think Emma or Margot will win? I think... 
I think Emma will win, but I think it's closer than maybe I thought before the nominations. Because I think like Barbie can win picture. I think Barbie will win comedy musical picture. And I actually still think there's a chance it could win screenplay, <laughs> even though it's against like a lot of heavy hitters. I know, but I mean that like Margo would still win when it yeah. wins best picture. Yeah. Uh, I do think Barbie can win picture, but I think Emma Stone will win best actress here. I still think when you look at this, like, it's a narrative and it's everything, but I'm like the performance, like even if people who aren't like super, super excited about poor things, I think everyone is like the performance is just undeniable. So I feel like she'll win. And they like poor things. Yeah. Uh, musical or comedy actor. Uh, I got five out of six here. Nicholas Cage, Timothy Chalamet, Matt Damon for Air, Paul Giamatti, Joaquin Phoenix for Bo is Afraid. So you were right about Joaquin being a Globesy pick choice, I feel like, but not the right movie. Not Napoleon. Although you could argue that Napoleon should be in comedy musical. Probably. And then Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Uh, good lineup. Um, yeah. So uh, who do you think would win? I think it's between Jeffrey and Paul. And like, like we said, holdovers didn't do that great. Um, but it's not like American Fiction overperformed either. Holdovers miss screenplay so. and directing with six slots feels like a choice. Uh, American Fiction also missed screenplay, though. Yeah, and it wasn't expected in director. No. So, but it also didn't add like any other like acting nomination. And then Holdovers also missed supporting actor with an extra slot. Right. But it, it's like basically like locked for an acting win and supporting actress, too. That's why I actually think uh, Jeffrey Wright would have the edge and will probably win because. I think a lot of the holdovers conversation is just all directing towards Dan, uh, Divine. Um, but I think it's between the two of them. So yeah. I don't think anyone else. Would I'll tell you who I'll have in third, Timothy Chalamet for my beloved movie Wonka. No offense to Matt Damon for air. Uh, Wonka did really well overseas. This Great weekend. movie. Great movie. Great Opening movie. this weekend. Everyone go see it. Take the Fantastic. kids. Fantastic. Get it that I'm hoping that gets a an original songs. Hopefully, get in there or production design. I still have it in for production design. I think it's awesome. I and, have it in. I, maybe I have it in costumes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have it in somewhere. I think I can get like multiple nominations. <laughs> so good. Uh, supporting actress in any movie: Emily Blunt, Danielle Brooks, Jodie Foster, Julianne Moore, Rosamund Pike, and Divine Joy. Divine Joy Randolph. I think I got four of these six, maybe. Um, I just, I had Penelope, as you know, instead of Rosamund. So I had five. I had five of the six. I had Erica Alexander instead of Rosamund. Uh, um, love to see Rosamund in there. Yeah, but this, like, Davon has just been sweeping. Like, I, everything. I, and, like, it could still change with the televised precursors, but it kind of feels like it won't. <laughs> I, I kind of think... My big takeaway after this weekend, and like you're saying, she swept there. I moved her into first ahead of Danielle again. Uh, in, in oh, I did that last week. I was like, I think when, like, after Color Purple missed NBR and AFI. And I'm just like, I think we're going to have the acting categories are locked into Lily and Divine. <laughs> I think they're both going to sweep as much as they can. It's like she, and I mean, like, I would say before, um, globes today i would say that i mean i already had holdovers in number two at the oscars for best picture but i would have said that you know holdovers could do like the usual package of a small film best picture winner of like picture a supporting win and screenplay mm-hmm. like we've seen that time and time again yeah and then uh, but i definitely think screenplay no, directing yeah. here but yeah she's she's just the only thing she's lost so far as of today monday december 11th is Gotham to Charles Melton in their gender neutral category. And she probably would have won if they still had gendered categories. Based know, on the so. response, I think, yeah, she would absolutely finish. She was probably runner up, I would imagine, to him. Yeah. Like she's just been crushing it. And, you know, one of LA's two winners with Rachel McAdams mm-hmm. yesterday. And so I think, um, you know, the fun of this category at this point, it seems like it's just figuring out the other nominees. And then it, it'll be really boring in phase two if she continues to sweep. I I definitely agree with that. I think it will be boring in phase two. And I think the fun is the nominees because like we said, there is like, I mean, I think I have right now for my five, 
at the Oscars, Divine, Danielle, Emily, Jody, and Julianne. So that could be the I have, five. I have the same and or not. So it's like the more spots that open up or just feel kind of, you know, unsettled. I I think there's opportunity there for at least I think Jody and Julianne are vulnerable to miss, though I think Jody maybe more than Julianne, because I think people are really gonna like her performance. And Jody, I feel like is so great in Nyad and really fun, but also maybe it's like not a there's going to be maybe you could get knocked off by someone with more passion, whether it's like an Eric Alexander or whoever. And maybe, who knows, right? Sandra Huller for her zone of interest, maybe. You never know, right? Like just there's room for like a very strong, passionate bounce from one of these outsider contenders. Um, And, and you know, like my thing of there's usually a couple of acting nominees, not from Best Picture. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. So. Uh, film supporting actor i went five or six here they had defoe de niro downey gosling melton and ruffalo so they went fully chalk i had sterling k brown over de niro um yeah i had the chalk lineup for forever and then i changed it last night to so, i dropped like willem for sterling so yes. that was like whatever but um yeah they went chalk and again this is a, a case where it's not helpful at all and it's you know it feels like low stakes because they covered basically the top people in conversation and also yeah. i'm like i would love to know it would have been nice to have five because then you're like able to have a data point i'm like oh this person is now maybe on the outside right now yeah. it's like i don't know who would have been six based on this list yeah because like the most people expected this so right um yeah i think this is where downey will start i but i could see gossel winning obviously i think this is where downey will start i think it's probably between the two of them yeah um Ryan had a good weekend too. He won Boston and was runner up at LA. I so, think one of them will win. I'll be curious to see. Both would give great speeches. I think Downey's would be like. I mean, remember Ryan's La La Land speech? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, let, let's just say RDJ would be a lot more polished. <laughs> That's what I mean. I think RDJ would definitely be like, he would definitely be like pu- putting like the Jamie Lee Curtis full court press on in these speeches. Um, Yeah, I think like they both feel like a Globes pick. And I think like RDJ is definitely like one, one of those people who might not perform well during the critics phase, um, but then just completely flip it during the televised phase. My overall sense of the critics group so far is that like, they go out of their way to not actually pick a like the top Oscar contenders and B it's just like Robert Downey Jr. in, in Oppenheimer is awesome. I just don't think anybody could argue with that. And then it's like, but it's not any, it's not worth like who cares. Right. Like I'd rather give it to Charles Melton or whoever is going to win. Right. Like Gosling even uh, than Downey. So that's like my big thing. I think that it's like, he wouldn't win any of these, even though I think he could easily. No, like I, like, I don't think anyone expected him to win no. any of the like the big three at yeah. all like he'll probably win he won atlanta last week in a tie because they just went all out for oppie right but so he'll probably pick up a couple more um along the way it it reminds me of like will smith for king mm-hmm. richard like he won mbr and maybe like one or two other regionals um but then like televises you know when it all started or untelevised since globes were not televised right year um i'm still gonna stick with the vibe i have for the oscars which is with de niro in in sixth and i have charles melton in but i could see aka not there (laughs) yes but i could see i just can't pick between these two poor things guys i I think if i was gonna put de niro back in it would be to drop one of them so like de niro hasn't been doing well with like critics like he's been missing nominations left and right um so I don't know because it's like it's like it's still just critics you know but maybe it's like an indication of the lack of passion uh for rewarding him I because we know all the passions with Lily I think all the passions Lily I think we like we've said since we saw this in May he's awesome in the movie he saw it in June okay (laughs) June whenever we saw it (laughs) whenever we saw it you've seen it three times already seen it three times but we first saw it in june and uh he's amazing and it, it was like a breath of fresh air watching him play this terrible character and he was so good in it 
Uh, and it's like my favorite performance of his since the Irishman, which is not saying much, but also he's like, it's just a different flavor than the Irishman too. Uh, it's great. He's so good. But I also think like you're saying, like, it's kind of like, I think he's at that level of like a Tom Hanks or even like a Merrill where it would be like either a filler nomination or like, we don't need, you know what I mean? Like, but if gonna... he's a Merrill, then he would get in. I think he's more like a Tom then. Because it's like, it's a great performance that I'm like, there's going to be, I think Charles Melton is a more like for people, if you're a voter, you might be like, oh man, this new guy I've never seen before because I'm not watching Riverdale uh, is great in this movie. Totally missing unexpected. out on second Reggie guys. Right. But like De Niro, it's like, of course, De Niro is great. Like you're not going to have a, somebody's going to question De Niro being great probably at this point. I don't know. I could still see him missing, but I, if it was one of the, the, the problem is the poor things guys both have really great narratives. Willem is the heart and soul of the film. I've seen like, uh, you know, a, the movie opened this weekend. So um, uh, my friend saw it and also loves Willem. I think he's really going to, I think people are going to respond to him because he's like the most earnest, genuine character in the movie, arguably. Right. So like, uh, and Ruffalo, like we said, it's just hilarious and like really funny and like totally like kind of just stomping through. I could see him missing because it's like more of a lighter performance, but I actually think they both get in. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I just think Melton is feels like to me, he's almost in third behind De Niro. I mean, behind Downey and Gosling. Um, I don't know if I put him as high as third, but um, like may do you, you have May December in picture? Not yet. Yeah, but, like I think he would also make sense as one of the non best picture acting nominees. I I think that the movie could. I think right now I I and like, like this category loves like best picture yes. coattails. So. I know, that's why I would have the both four things in there, and I think De Niro is an easy drop because like he's De Niro, but he's great in the movie. So if he got in, I'd be thrilled. Uh, director, we kind of talked about this, but it was Bradley Cooper, Greta Gerwig, Yorgos Lanthimos, Christopher Nolan, Martin Scorsese, and Celine Song. A huge boost for uh, her and the movie. Again, they they love past lives. Uh, we had expected Cooper. I think I had him in. I think you did too. I had Payne, and I'm sure you did as well. So he was the miss. Yeah, I had Payne. I dropped. I dropped uh Bradley for Justine. Oh, okay. Yeah, but like uh, I expected Bradley to get in. I dropped Payne in my Oscar picks again now. Then for Glazer, I think the top. I think I I do feel like Gerwig, Lanthimos, Nolan, and Scorsese are pretty firmly set to me. I could see Gerwig missing, obviously, and we've talked with many emails and people have told me how she's not going to get in, right, and whatever, but I'm like, I think she's going to get in, so. I think I, like, I do want to predict her for the Oscars. Like, I've, I've mentioned this before. Like, I think she'll get in at DGA, and I think Payne would too, and then I, it's like, do I just copy the DGA 5 when they haven't matched in 14 I, years? <laughs> I absolutely think that. I think Payne will get in for DGA, and I think that'll be the 5, and then I think Payne will drop either for Jonathan Glazer, who I have in now again, or like Celine Song could actually get in, but I just think the branch is so insular and like for a first time filmmaker, it's tough to get in. So I don't think she'll get in, but I think her and Bradley are certainly in that out, like they're there, they could get in, but who knows? I mean, this weekend also offered really no, or not that much clarity between Justine and Jonathan for like the Euro slot because Anatomy of a Fall dominated the European Film Awards and she won there. And then obviously he won at LA yesterday and, and Zone Zone got, you know, it rebounded um, yesterday. So, but again, that's still critics, whereas EFA is industry. I think Justine could definitely get into the Oscars, but I just feel like, like, I think it would have been an easy split. Like if they were in the same screenplay category, it would be an easy split to have like her get in for screenplay and Jonathan Glazer get in for director even though they probably don't think that but i'm like because adapted is pretty soft like he could get in for director and adapted and she'll get in for screenplay i don't know i mean i i have both of their scripts getting in at the oscars Same. so it's like i like that i think that's completely relevant to what happens in director um but it's just like i think or maybe like both of them get in so if both of them get in who would you drop Gerwig you don't even have Gerwig so I would I drop if I put both of them in I don't know who I would drop Joyce best well let's move on to best screenplay great Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach leading off then Tony McNamara for Poor Things Christopher Nolan Oppenheimer Eric Roth and Martin Scorsese for Kills of Flower Moon Celine Song Past Lives and Justine Dre and Arthur uh, Harari for Anatomy of a Fall 
I did not have Flower Moon, which we talked about in depth, I feel like, last week. Uh, and now I feel stupid because I got it. Um, we, we both dropped it, right? I think we both dropped it. The big but... misses here were, Ameri- for me, were American Fiction and The Holdovers. Yes. Um, and I also think May-December had like a lot of people maybe expecting it to show up here as well. Um, I didn't think it would here just because it's a combined category. You know, I felt like Holdovers and American Fiction uh, would be ahead of it. To so. me, maybe bias showing because I think American Fiction is better than The Holdovers just on a personal level. But I was like, I think it's worse that The Holdovers missed here than American Fiction. Uh, though I think it's not great for either of them. I think The Holdovers should have easily been here. I don't know. Yes, The Holdovers so. should have shown up here. Yeah. Um, so not great bob but you could still like write it off as you know it's a single category for screenplay but i think a lot of people will here's what i'll say every critic i know uh loves it right like people love this movie people i think who don't like the movies i usually like like regular people love this movie regular people seem to love this movie but i've heard like whispers uh of older academy like people who you would think would love the movie because i felt when i saw it i tell you right i was like this is like just fully like boomer oscar bait basically right like all these old white people in the academy are gonna love this movie and then all like the young millennials love it because it's like effect it's like nostalgia for a time they didn't even live through right basically or whatever it is and then i'm here like i heard like one of my i like i heard whispers of it being like not as hot of a ticket for older academy members i don't know how there's one anecdotal data point but i'm just saying like maybe it's not as embraced widely as i expected um i i mean there are like ten thousand academy members but i've right. i've heard that like older people older than me in the academy have enjoyed it so I don't think it's like disliking it, but I think I I think a lot of people were expect like or like you were saying like could easily win Best Picture, right? Like it was that kind of thing. Well, I think it's it's just like no one hates it. It's the thing, so it's like a good consensus right. pick, right? But I do wonder if one of the things I wonder is like the people who were alive and when the movie is aping like seventies movie making, the people who were alive in the seventies are they going to watch this and be like this is great, or are they going to watch this and be like get the hell out of here? It's not like you know what I mean. That was kind of like. It kind of reminds me a little of West Side Story where it's like the older people. I felt like the older, you would think like that would have been like an older bait, right? Or whatever. But it was like, I think a lot of older voters were like, at least in the anonymous ballots we read that year or whatever, were like, this is a great movie. I don't need to see this shit again, basically. Right? I think, but that's more because they grew up with the 61 version or the, the stage musical. And like Spielberg also did a twist on yeah it's not i think those are different because that's like familiar ip so and like whereas like holdovers is an original story and it's just like oh this is remind them of their lives from 50 years ago yeah i do think that i my i mean it is an original story but it does feel like ip to me in the sense that it's like aping like 70s movies that's like the ip right everything yeah but like that's that's just like the the setting and the inspo for it it's not it's not the same as west side story like that's literal ip and that's that's why people feel protective of the 61 version or they feel like they don't want or need to see the new version right like i don't think that's the same thing the holdovers it's not the same, but I think it's like not di- totally dissimilar. I, all I know is it should have shown up here. I don't, it's not going to affect how I predicted it at Oscars or anything. But, but it's also, it doesn't surprise me that it, like the, the Globes didn't really go for it that hard. So like, there's just some things that make sense as like Globes films and some that don't, you right. know, it's like last year, they didn't really like everything everywhere all at once that much, you know, no. it didn't win a picture here. So what do you think is going to win here? of this group for screenplay ugh. uh this is this is hard i based on how the i mean based on the nomination shook out with barb and Heimer at the top i think you're in for a scenario where it, uh, it's like i think it's like either barbie or Oppie. i think barbie wins this i think nolan wins director and i think they both win picture <laughs> and that's how we go out of this show uh with the two movies that were the biggest movies of the year winning the biggest awards 
remember when Aaron Sorkin won this for Chicago 7 and gave his best director speech? Great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, original score, which you know we love. Uh, Poor Things, Oppenheimer, Boy in the Heron, Zone of Interest, Spider-Verse, and Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, Good list. I like this list. Like this list a lot. I think at least three of these will get in at the Oscars. Uh, Oppenheimer, Spider-Verse, and Flower Moon, I feel like are the top three for me at the Oscars. Um, I can see Spidey missing at the Oscars. I also have Zone of Interest in at the Oscars. I think Zone so. of Interest could get in also. Um, I mean, I don't, I would, man, dear, I don't want to go, I don't want to think of a world where Daniel Pemberton doesn't a, get it's in. It's a good, it's a good category. I know, um, but it's so well, good. They did, they did two animated films here, so. Uh, they did and not Elemental, which means I'm going to probably take it out of the Oscars. Thomas Newman, sorry, bud. <laughs> not for this one, maybe. Um, Original song. This is a banger category as well. Addicted to Romance. She came to me. Music and lyrics by Bruce Springsteen. Joyce. They love Bruce. Dance the Night. Barbie. I'm just Ken Barbie. Peaches. Super Mario. Road to Freedom for for Rustin. And what was I made for for Barbie? So you can't have three Barbies at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. So I still think two of the Barbies get in, and Dance the Night is probably the one that drops. Yeah, they just won Dua Lipa there. So I think Peaches could get at the Oscars, but I don't have it in right now. I did put the Rustin one in, though. Because of this? Or did I not put it in? Let me look. I gotta see. I gotta see what I put in. I made a change there. I don't remember what it is. Hang on. It, me I mean, the Rustin nom just feels like a very Globes thing to do, uh, as does the, the Bruce one. I did put Rustin in, and I have this wish still. And I have, so I have two Barbies. The Diane Warren jam Flame from Flame and Hot. You, you gotta stick with Diane. This wish and Rust and Road to Freedom. Okay. But I I'll be curious to see what's on the short list. And I, I could see like there's a lot of star wattage potential here. So because there are three Barbies and they're all bangers in their own way, like what if they split the vote and one of the others I actually think Peaches is gonna win for Jack Black. <laughs> I think that's very possible. If I had like, a guess. This one just feels like they were going to do the, the Barbie songs. And then it was like, let's, the other ones, let's nominate like huge names. I kind of think that this is a problem. We'll see if it happens at the Oscars and what the final list looks like. But it is, even though there's only going to be two Barbies at the Oscars, I do think that you could run into an issue where they're, the two of the bar, the Barbies really are evenly split. I feel like, because I think, you know, most people just have, uh, what was I made for? And I'm just Ken. And I feel like they'll just give it to Billy again. They could. Uh, so that's it for movies choice. It looks like we got through the movie categories. Any anything else there before we go to TV? Um, no. Uh, good job. Great nominees. Oh, yeah, love the Gold Globes nominee for movies. And now to TV choice, another great job. I would say. What do you think? Um, amazing job. As we said, Succession nine nominations, iconic. Succession, nine nominations, just rules. The Bear and Only Murders had five. The Crown with four. Beef, Daisy Jones, Fargo, Ted Lasso, The Last of Us with three. And then 1923, Abbott Elementary, Barry, The Diplomat, Fellow Travelers, Jury Duty, Lessons in Chemistry, and The Morning Show with two. And then a lot with one. They love Succession. Yeah. And it's really like shame on all of us for not predicting more succession like we were very conservative with yep. succession not just you and me but everyone i feel like yeah because the globes historically do not shower one show with nine nominations like this you know it's usually like four or five tops with something but i think it also speaks to you know again like the the lack of competition some of it's strike induced you know with the lays and everything um, and also them just genuinely liking it. I don't think Succession is a case where um, they're trying to play a catch up um, because like other places have awarded it. Like they they were on it from the jump because they nominated Kieran for the first season. So I, I think it's that. I think it's also not just the lack of product. They clearly didn't like certain shows or they didn't yes. love a lot of shows that like we expected them maybe to love. Particularly Abbott Elementary, where I think like you get it. Well, Abbott Elementary, like, Defending Champ, I do think it might have been affected. I mean, those are di completely different categories. Well, for supporting actress, I was but, like, Jay Smith Cameron gets in, and uh, none of the Abbott people get in. Is that well, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I I didn't, I wasn't predicting reigning champ Tyler James Williams either. 
Um, but I, I do think like Abed not having aired in the fall because of the strike I, might have heard it because it's so. like out of sight, out of mind. I mean, like Charlie Ralph did not make it in, but like that's crazy to me. I just think that's nuts. But we'll we'll go through these quick. Uh so drama series, delightful. Nineteen twenty three, Paramount Plus. Should have known. Should have put it in. <laughs> uh, The Crown, The Diplomat, The Last of Us, The Morning Show, and Succession. Um, well, like we talked about, everyone had the top four. And yes. then it was just like, what about the other two? And the other oh, two I, were I did Loki three and the diplomat. <laughs> I did Loki and uh whatchamacallit, your favorite, Justify. So that is so offensive. <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, and you like no way they were ever gonna touch that. They've never nominated Justified before. And it's like no. But um yeah, they won with nineteen twenty three. And the diplomat. And the yeah. diplomat. So they both make sense. Um, Definitely. in some way. They uh, rejected the the non morning show Apple shows. Mm-hmm. And the twenty which we also expected. Yeah. I kept it because I had no idea what else to put in, but I'm like, I don't think they're nominating this. No. Uh congrats to succession on his drama win, I guess. Um, yeah, it'll it'll tie the record for three wins. So in series, it'll be great. TV series, musical or comedy, Abbott, Barry, The Bear, Jury Duty, Only Murders, and Ted Lasso. Or as Subject Entertainer calls it, Only Murderers in the Building. Love it. Yeah. I had five yeah. of the six somehow. What did I I had I didn't have Barry, I guess. I didn't have Barry either, but like I said before, I was so excited. It made it back in for the final season. Why do you think it's they not winning though? Why do you think they embraced the final season compared to I had poker face in my last spot, so um, I also have poker face. I, I I dropped shrinking for poker face. So again, a wash. Um, I you know because Barry is the best, so they went back to it. I think I think last season or last season last year, uh, it got um. I mean, it only did they make it in? Yeah, it made it for the first two seasons. Yeah. So I think last season it got bumped out by Wednesday. Because mm-hmm. that broke it because it premiered like, you know, yeah. uh, November 22nd and that was a huge, massive hit and such a globe show. So I think Wednesday bumped it out and then I it was able to make it back in this year because it's, you know, there's no Wednesday this year. And it clearly didn't really care for like poker face or shrinking. <laughs> I think that's true. And I also think that like, like you were saying with Abbott, I think poker face hurt by being so at it. like it's almost a year old at this point. It premiered in January. Yeah. And so, like, that's a long time ago. And while and it like, wasn't a massive smash, no, no. So. so I'm not surprised uh, that they went back to something they had embraced previously. Limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for TV. All the Light We Cannot See, Beef, Daisy Jones, Fargo, Fellow Travelers, Showtime, and Lessons in Chemistry. Um, I, I had um a small light instead of All the Light We Cannot See. So I a different light yeah i had four of six i had small light and i had murder at the end of the world oh i didn't do that uh instead of fellow travelers i guess hmm. um great category okay. these are some good shows yeah um congratulations to be i guess so yeah though i, I will say know. daisy I jones i wouldn't count out it got the acting it got the sam claflin now yeah but i think it'll, it'll still just go with beef it i mean i, I sam wasn't surprising are you no. suggesting he's a surprise no. no but so. he could have missed i don't think so and that like that that was a barren category i i immediately put him in I, like because it was just like steven young and then who else it was like matt bomer sure matt and bomer. then sam claflin <laughs> uh drama actress helen mirren bella ramsey carrie russell sarah snook imelda staunton for the crown and emma stone for the curse so they they did imelda no morning show mm-hmm. I, I got three. Points. I got three of the six, so I did not do well here. Um, as as you recall, I dumped Melanie Linsky for Reese Witherspoon. You were very right on that. But I, they were going to ignore that. I know, but they also ignored Reese. And so, Jeff, so, why do you think they missed nominating more show for series and then missing both of them in a six category acting category, a six person category? A category feels like a choice, but I could only assume they just split their own vote. 
No, I I think they just didn't like the season. That they're, they're not the critics' choice. Critics' choice loved the season, gave it six nominations, and only got two. Right, only got this and Billy Crudup or yeah. series and Billy Crudup. So, um, so I I think they just didn't care for the season. Like there was certainly room for both of them to get in this year in yeah. lots. So, um, uh, Melda getting in for the Crown. I finally we finished this whole season. The screen oh, was- including the finale. Yeah, it was good. Okay. So, she's in it, so that's good. Yeah, she's uh, in it. They they wrap lots of things up. <laughs> yeah, uh, drama actor in a TV series. Brian Cox, Kieran Culkin, Gary Oldman, Pedro Pascal, Jeremy Strong, and Dominic West for for the Crown. I mean, as soon as they said Brian Cox, I was like, three Succession guys, just like the Emmys, <laughs> which <laughs> unprecedented here. But again, just shows how much they liked the show and then how much they didn't really care for anything else. So let me ask you this right now. I would say it wins drama. Sarah Snook wins actress. And I think Kieran would win actor. Yeah. Which would be awesome because that means uh, all three of them, Kieran, Jeremy and Brian would have won the globe. This one, this is impossible at the Emmys. I I really feel like they're going to say, I think people would want to say Pedro Pascal would win because of a vote split, but they are so embracing of succession. And it seems like they actually pay attention to the show based on their votes that he would win. And I mean, you know, like I said, like Kieran was it, it the show's only nomination for season, mm-hmm. season one. Um, so it does. It feels like it's bad that he has not won yet. His previous nominations were in supporting. And usually if you haven't won by this point and you're just accruing these nominations at the Globes, it means you're never going to win. But I do feel like this is such a different circumstance and he's in a different category. And like they're loving the show more as it gets older. And usually it's the opposite. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of think that he's going to win here and I'll have him in my no, And I think they, like, they are they do know that they've given it to Brian and Jeremy before so they've uh, also given to sarah before that was in the, mm-hmm. the non-televised year in supporting for female actress in a m- musical or comedy rachel brosnahan quinta brunson io debry l fanning selena gomez and natasha leone did you have l fanning we talked about this the other day no i had Cheryl lancashire i remember right we talked about l because it felt like that was the easy pick and they just went with the the easy, the easy. pick. Yeah, I had Devery yeah. Jacobs in there for me. Uh Io winning. Yeah. yeah. Um Quinta won last year. I don't think she's gonna win again. No. Especially with how Abba tanked. That's why. So uh actor in a musical or comedy, Bill Hader, Steve Martin, Jason Siegel, Martin Short, Jason Sudeikis, and Jeremy Allen White. Um, got all of them. I got five of the six. I did not have Siegel. I had uh, Jarell Jerome for I'm a Virgo. The again on chalk here. So yeah. Um, congratulations again to Jeremy. It, this based on this, it feels like bear comedy, Jeremy and Io, and then succession drama, uh, Kieran and Sarah. That's the winners. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just bear and succession winning everything. Uh. The best performance by an actress in a limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for television. Riley Keough, Brie Larson, Elizabeth Olsen for your favorite show, Love and Death, Joyce. She finally shows up somewhere. Juno Temple for Fargo, Rachel Vice for Dead Ringers, and Ali Wong for Beef. I had, I had, uh, uh not, I had Dominic, uh, Dominic Fishback. Dominic Fishback. I think, I think like everyone one. had Dominic Fishback. And uh, I also had Belle Powley for a small light. Same. But I had uh, the other four. And then we talked about like how it felt like Dead Ringers was dead, and then they resurrected Rachel Weisz. Jokes on me that uh, she that was not dead. We went with the wrong polarizing Amazon show. The swarm yeah, no, they, polarizing. They just want Rachel and Daniel Craig to be there. So yeah. Uh, um, and then yeah, Lizzie finally shows up without Jesse Plemons. <laughs> so funny. Do you think uh, Ali Wong wins this? Yes. Okay. I think. I mean, we could just have one show sweeping series and, and leads in all three genres. I think that's pretty much what it's going to be. I, I mean, like, if... I don't know. Like, who who else do you think could win this? I think Brie like could Riley? win it. 
I think Riley or Bree could win, but I, they're well behind Allie. Yeah. So, I mean, I I really don't think anyone's beating Steven. Um, no, we'll do that one now. Okay. Actor in a anthology limited or motion picture. Matt Bomber, Sam Claflin, John Hamm, Woody Harrelson for White House Plumbers. Uh, no, David Oyelowo for Lawman Bass Reeves and uh, Stephen Young for Beef. Um. Yeah, so I got five. Uh, out of I six. also got I didn't. Five. I didn't have Woody. I did not either. I had Tom Holland for the crowded room. I did. I put him in there instead of Kiefer. So again, a wash. Uh, yeah, I think Stephen and Ali are both in these categories. Uh, supporting actress and TV, all TV. Elizabeth the Big again for the Crown. I, Abby Elliott for the Bear, which is just like. Awesome. She's so good on it, but that's hilarious. Christina Ricci for Yellow Jackets, which is like, how do they remember? But they did. Uh, Jay Smith Cameron for Succession, Meryl Streep, and Hannah Waddingham. The the Christina Ricci nomination, I love because, you know, she was snubbed at the Emmys. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is Yellow Jackets only nomination. Uh, I, I did. And then the, the Abby one is is fun. I did quite poorly. I got three out of six here because my other ones were Shirley Ralph, who I had in second place. I cannot believe she missed, especially against like Christina Ricci for a show that they clearly didn't like in the second season. Uh, just shocking to me that she missed. Uh, and I had Alex Borstein for Maisel and Aja Naomi King for Lessons in Chemistry. Um, the, I mean, I think this is between Meryl and Elizabeth. I kind of think it's maybe between Meryl and Abby Elliott. <laughs> Based on how the I bear mean, performs. I don't like I don't think the bear's gonna win that many. I don't think it is, but I mean I think Meryl is gonna win, clearly, but I think that like Abby and Jay Smith Cameron could be second and third. Well, the thing is they don't like because if we're assuming three shows are gonna win at least three awards. I'm, um, I'm picking Meryl, don't don't get me wrong, but I know, but I'm just saying, like, they don't, like, that's already a lot for three shows. And they don't usually give that many two shows, you know? And then I, I think it'll be tough for any of them to win a fourth. Are you surprised that, like, Charlie Ralph didn't make it in, or you just think it's because of what we were saying, like, the Ab Abbott was just on? No, I think it's just what I said before. Like, I think it's kind of, I expected it to do worse this year than last year. I already didn't have Tyler James Williams who won last year. And then I I had Cheryl and Janelle, but I dropped Janelle. Um for Camilla Marone, your fave, who also didn't make it in. I saw, but, I saw people predicting her, yeah. Um no, like I, I think, yeah, like it's it's something they already awarded last year. And then yeah, just like no new episodes in the fall yeah. either. And then we did have the bear season two over the summer. Right. So, and then supporting actor in a television show. This is a baller lineup. Billy Crudup, Matthew McFadden, James Marsden, Evan Moss Bacharach, Alan Ruck, and Alexander Sarsgaard. The best lineups. It's really good. <laughs> um, yeah. So, again, it's like they pulled like a an Emmys with the Succession stomp. So did Succession. So so did Succession win four Golden Globes then? I I don't think it'll win supporting actress. No offense to JSC. But it could win show. I actor, think I think it can win Matthew. And Matthew. That's four. Yeah. But like mm -hmm. I think it can do that. And if if Matthew uh, wasn't gonna win, who would you pick? <sighs> Marzen or Evan? I can see them doing James. Yeah. Because it's like such it's like such a different pick, you know, like I can see the succession guys splitting. Although I do think like Matthew was ahead, especially because he did win the Emmy and this is their first chance since his Emmy win and last chance to award him. I, I think there's part of that. And I think that could happen very easily. And like you said, like he could win, but I think the idea of giving, they'd be out in front in the margin. They would be the first group to do it. That could happen then at the Critics' Choice and the Emmys, basically. 
I mean, it has no impact on the Emmys because they finished voting. I, I know, but I'm saying like the perception of being first on the TV to give him an award and have him up there giving a speech, I think would be like an enticing bit. And then, I mean, like Billy is like such a, it's it's actually surprising he hasn't won this for the morning show yet because he just chews the scenery so much on that show and it, it feels like Globe's catnip. So I can yeah. see him winning too. And he he was like basically a lead this season in season three, Billy. Yeah. Um, And then I th- I think like, Eben could win, but I would not bet on him. No, right now. But I, I like I can see it happening. I, I, I think really the only people I can picture winning as much are Eldest Son and Ace Scars. Sadly, yeah. even though I love them, great noms, but no chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the last TV category was a new one choice: best performance in a stand-up comedy on television. Uh, Ricky Gervais, Trevor Noah. Chris Rock, Amy Schumer, Sarah Silverman, and Wanda Sykes. You know, I can't say I've seen any of these. No controversy among any of these nominees. They're just Absolutely totally yeah. none. No, but everybody, uh, perfect scores and Q ratings. Everybody loves all these people. Uh, Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of these either. I watched the Chris Rock one, so. Of course you did. Um, You know, Ricky, former host. Feels like he would win based on that, but it's a different globe. So maybe it'll go I, like I feel like, like Trevor is a nice, like, platonic ideal. Yeah. Who do you think is going to host the Globes, Joyce? We don't know yet as of this recording on December 11th. Someone on CBS or Paramount Plus. I saw that. Uh, I think Matt Bellany said they, or somebody said they went out to the smart list guys. Maybe that was on CNN. Um, I feel like they'd be too busy. Yeah, they apparently said no. But. Cedric the Entertainer, right? Does he have a, doesn't he, isn't the neighborhood on CBS? Yeah. That, and that's hosted, why E and Wilmer announced the nominations. And and he hosted the Emmys quite well, I thought. So he could do it. Yeah, that was the pandemic, the COVID, right? Yeah, like, well, the in-person COVID year. Yeah, in that was a good show. He was a really yeah. funny host, I thought. The Bismarck he, Yeah. Uh, tribute in the beginning. That was fun. Yeah, yeah he's good. Mm-hmm. I, w- I, w- I would run it back with uh, Cedric, the host. Why not? Yeah, the neighborhood. Why don't they just bring Cedric and Wilmer back? Is uh, Max Greenfield on the neighborhood? Mm-hmm. why isn't the two of them host together um maybe they don't want to you know like that that's just promoting one show you could promote yeah but they'd be really good the neighborhood together. and ncis yeah no i know but they'd be really good together so those are the globes Joyce. so a bunch of sweeps in tv and then perhaps barbie and oppenheimer in in movies that might be where i'm going uh yeah. We didn't make any predictions yet and we won't do it just yet, but do you th- for movie actor drama, do you, who do you think will win that? Uh, I mean, I think the consensus will be Bradley. Yeah. So, uh, what I you mean, think- if, if he loses this, like that's that's rough. Like I don't expect him to do well with the, the critics and he hasn't. You know, that's like totally not a critics movie. So, he's another one who will could start his run with the televised precursors, which is also what we thought last time. Yeah. And that didn't happen. So, uh, but I I think like Maestro always felt like a movie that the Globes would love the most. I'm still really not sure of its position in the Oscar race. Cause like, I think, I think we all have it in best picture, but it yeah. feels like it's just there. I, I think it's there. I think it's in like the, the five to seven range for best picture. I think an issue I have with it is where is the other, like picture, actor, actress feel pretty set. Makeup. I don't know if you could lock in at sound, maybe. You know what I mean? Like there's other categories, but I'm like, it doesn't feel like it's like, it doesn't, it, it's closer in a lot of categories than like these other big movies, right? Like Barbie and Oppenheimer and Poor Things and Flower Moon, where there's are like locked for like eight, nine, 10 nominations. Yeah, and then it. I feel like it's just not. It's it's like hard. It's gonna be hard for it to like crack the top five. Yeah, in terms of momentum, like I feel like it's gonna be in that mid range. But we like so, you're saying like, maybe Bradley gets in for direct. Who knows? I I I, I'm I don't think he'll get into director. I don't think so. Either. So, but I I feel like this might be his like one big directing nomination this season and who knows would he have gone in without the sixth slot we'll never like, know like i i i did not have him when it was just five no 
we'll never know. It's... Uh, Joyce, we could do two emails here before we go. Uh, and I guess we'll be back Wednesday after the Critics' Choice nominations. Can't wait to see how many ties. This, this list goes to 15. I can't wait for that. I'm just so psyched. No choices. Uh, this one is from Carlos, who emailed us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Sent it in last night on Sunday night. Hi, Chris wow. and Joyce. I'm Carlos, and my question is about the gender-neutral categories and what you think about them. We saw at the Los Angeles Film Critics Association how only women won, and I wonder what would have happened if it had only been men. There probably would be complaints about how this system doesn't work. Maybe they should have had male and female winners, or maybe they should just go back to best actor and actress as it always has been done. I would like to know your opinion. Have a nice day. That's from Carlos. Uh, well, Carlos, my opinion is if you're going to have gender neutral categories, just do one winner in each. I think I would absolutely agree. I, I, it feels like when as LA feels like having its cake and eating it too. Exactly. Like they started it last year with the gender neutral categories and then two winners in each category. And it's like, why? Like so if you're two just, winners and then two you runners. You still up. want your four acting winners. That's all. But if you're going to do, if you're going to take a stance and do gender neutral categories, you should have two winners. It, it's four. It's really four because they have these runners up. So like leading performances at, at, at the LA on Sunday was San, Sandra Huller for Anatomy of Fall and Zone of Interest and Emma Stone for Poor Things. And then Andrew Scott and Jeffrey Wright runners up. Um. Yeah. And then their supporting picks really got film twitter aggrieved rachel mcadams and devon joy randolph uh fine morning people were fine with that and then uh ryan gosling for barbie and then lily gladstone choice for flower moon did lead, not like that at all. lead actor contender uh i think there's a world where you're like hey critics group's gonna march to the beat of their own drum and not listen to the oscar campaigners and uh you know be forced to pick a winner in this category but also it feels kind of like them being like F you to Lily Gladstone, who is like, I'm actually the lead in this movie. And it kind of feels like a little silly to me. It feels like they made it, that actively just, a it's choice. It's only funny to me. And obviously the optics are not great because they gave Patricia Arquette best actress for boyhood. And we know she was in supporting all season and won the Oscar in supporting. So that's the only thing that's funny to me that they did this um, with Lily. But I like, I'm, I'm just like, who cares like this has no bearing on her oscar chances like if you're a lily stan and you want her to win the best actress oscar she can still win the best actress oscar I, yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't think i don't it doesn't bother me from an oscar perspective i think she's uh, still steamrolling and will like continue to steamroll and probably win at the globes and win at the critics choice awards and best actress and it doesn't matter but it is funny to me that this group had to be like oh actually no we're not going to listen to what you want even though and i don't think they need value. to like i've seen like reactions like that it's like i can't believe they're not honoring her campaign it's like they don't need to like there's no rule that says you need to honor someone's campaign and respect sure. their campaign they can make their own decisions and i feel like as a group like any group not just them like you should make your own decisions you should not be trying to predict the oscars or whatever like do whatever you want and again it doesn't affect her Oscar chances. It, it doesn't affect her Oscar chances. It, it feels a little mansplaining to me to be like, actually, no, you're wrong. You're not the lead of this movie that you think you are. I, I don't know. I just thought it was stupid. And it was totally uncalled for based on the fact that uh, they could have just had, they have 50 awards. They could have made her a runner up. It's also the- funny because they did not have to like vote for her in like either category. I guess like uh, enough of them loved her or thought of her as supporting. I love supporting I, at like the supporting performance yeah. to vote for her there but it, it's just like I I think people are also annoyed um like because of the optics and obviously the the patty switcheroo that they did nine years ago but I, it's also because like you know Lily has been embraced as like the people's princess this season like everyone loves her mm-hmm. people want her to do well like she's very rootable right and like she has a great narrative and people want her to win and i get that um but like if you think about like last year like you know michelle williams she got i remember this clearly because the chicago critics nominated her in supporting and no one cared because people wanted her in supporting yes so and then it was also and i know it's chicago because chicago also gave olivia coleman their supporting actress award for the favorite five years ago and no one cared then because people thought she should have gone supporting as an easier path for a win instead of lead right so it's like people care when it's like going against what they want of course i mean yeah there's not there's no there wasn't this outrage for olivia coleman and michelle williams when 
like some groups went against their campaign. Right. And again, this does not affect Lily's Oscar chances. No, like yeah, she's probably she's gonna, gonna win. win. I think she's gonna win. It has no bearing on it. Uh and it just makes them look silly to me, but whatever. Uh other email here about the LA one. This one is from Sebastian Joyce. Email us at slugfestigolder.com. Hi, Chris and Joyce. I'm always looking forward to your weekly update on award season. I'm a huge fan of Rachel McAdams since I saw her turn in the very underrated comedy About Time in 2013, which I highly recommend to everyone. I think the older she gets, the better she gets. And I am still very happy she is an Oscar nominee for Spotlight, which is very deserved. Even though there is sentiment here and there that she does not do much in that movie, which I disagree. It is called a subtle acting performance. But most of the time, the most acting brings you the Oscar nomination. Now she is in the mix for a nomination for Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which she won at the LA Critics on Sunday, which really surprised and delighted me. I hope she is getting the Oscar nomination, but I fear a little bit that she is one of those that does ma- not make the cut in the end because she would only be the she would be the only nominee, maybe together with screenplay. What do you think? Can a see a SAG nomination, which would be a typical earlier in the year release nominee? That's from Sebastian. What do you think, Joyce? Uh, she's one of those like fringe contenders. I think. I think the the category has opened up in a way for her to be able to get in. I, she could have gotten a huge boost today had she been nominated at the Globes. So, so that I was, was waiting to put her. If she got nominated today at the Globes, you best believe I would have had her immediately in my Oscar picks, uh, without a doubt. But that she didn't. I'm now like pumping the brakes a little bit. Yeah, like she definitely feels like one of those. Um, or could be one of those like critics pushes who just fall short Mm -hmm. in the end you know um like i was very happy that she won yesterday with divine so it's like it's a great boost but yeah the movie is so small and i think if um you know like margaret could get into adapted screenplay in that last slot like so she wouldn't be a lone nominee we know like this category favors more like coattails or like stronger films Mm -hmm. So I feel like for her to get in as like a lone nominee or if she has one other nomination, she needs to start showing up more places. And I guess SAG is not out of the question, but. I kind of think it's possible also at SAG. I mean, yeah, it just depends. Like you said, like I had it in there in screenplay just as like a long shot, but I've taken it out for zone of interest uh, now and adapted. But like she would probably be a lone nominee then. Uh, man, she's just great in the movie. I I think people do like her, like in the industry. She seems like really well liked. And man, the uh, option, the idea of having her and Gosling together at the Oscars would be fun, I would say. That's what so many people want. I'm just like, I'm not like a huge notebook, uh, notebook person. So I'm just like, who cares? <laughs> I could see her getting in at SAG. I still don't think, I don't know if she'll get in at the Oscars. But I do think there is a p- way she could get it. I think she's got like a better chance now today than she did obviously like last week. And I think it's like not outside of the realm of possibility that she's like in the six to nine range. Oh, she's definitely in that range. Like yeah. she's a fringe contender. Yeah. So, it, yeah, like I I think it like there are there are just a lot of like cons to like things working against her now um, i will say this. If, like the race breaks her way like she can totally get in I'll, I'll say this she should absolutely get in at the critics choice awards because all the critics have spent six months telling you how great she is in the movie yes and they'll have like eight slots so so if she doesn't get in at the critics choice award i would say that's a just a show that don't believe half the things that people say on and uh, online and then being that it's a tough beat for her because like everyone's saying for months that she should get in and she's like great and blah blah yeah, blah but she, also that does not mean she'll like get the oscar nomination either no. it's just, but if she missed yeah. I, I just think it's like a momentum and a perception thing i think if she got in a creek show and she got in at sag then all of a sudden you're like oh i think she's gonna get in or at least she's like six seven eight but like i, I think a globe nomination would have meant more than a possible critics choice nomination yes, i think would have, so. tough beat missing at the globes uh those are emails for, at slugfest at goldderby.com joyce i guess we're all done we're gonna get this up hot off the presses and we'll be back wednesday uh to talk about the critics choice awards anything else happening before them nothing right there'll probably be like seven more regional critics groups to announce so more chances for Divine Joy Randolph to win uh, and more awards. What else would she lose besides the Gotham? I honestly don't know. What could she possibly lose? She's dominating. Just rubber stamping all the way. Do you think she'll win the Spirit Awards? 
I mean, obviously not for a while, but like. Well, I mean, like, yeah, but like by that point, you could have won you'll just like steam 50 roll. more awards. So just steamroll. Uh, all right, that's it. That's all I got. All right, we'll, we'll get this up. I see you later. Bye. <laughs>